Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In today's PSN30, we're going to take a look at the, not the history brush, but the art history brush in Photoshop. What can this tool do for you and how to use it? Well, the first thing is we would go into the history panel. You can see I've done a bunch of stuff on here on this, in this document, I should say. We have the original state of the document right here, 01.jpg. This is how the file was when we opened it. And I also created a snapshot. Um, which is just looks just like this. You can see it's just a copy of the image, basically. You can create a snapshot by hitting the little snapshot icon there. And then next to that, I've selected to make the art history or just the history brush tool in general sample. You can see set the source for the history brush. Boom. So it's going to sample from that history state. So now that we know we're sampling from basically the way the image originally was, I'm going to create a new image. And by the way, I just did that to show you that you can sample from a snapshot. You can just as easily sample from the original, uh, the, the original way the image was, or you can sample from any one of these history states along the way. I'm just going with my snapshot just because I can. So I've created a new blank layer. I've got the art history brush here. I've got a big soft edged brush. I'm actually going to go with a harder edged brush. So I'm going to increase the hardness to 100%, and I'm going to make the size of the brush. Uh, a bit larger, maybe about 284, whatever, I mean 300. Um, I'm going to change the style here to tight short, that's probably what you have, and I'm going to set the area to 100 pixels. So the area of this tool is basically, the area, you know, it's going to spread out, it's going to select colors and paint over up to 100 pixels uh, around where you're actually clicking. So you can see as I'm painting, it's loosely reflecting the color of the history state from which it's sampling. So you can see we're getting very dark tones here, but over the tiger's face, we're getting much lighter tones. So this tool essentially is going to allow you to create painterly effects um, using a whole myriad of different brushes. So you can use the uh, bracket keys, the square bracket keys, to make your brush larger or smaller. The right square bracket makes the brush larger, as you can see. I'm going to undo that. That's too big. And the left square bracket makes it a bit smaller. So I'm going to switch my style from tight short to loose curl long, and you've probably seen this if you've looked around at the art history brush at all. It's just these long, like, sausage-like links. I don't like that one much. Tight curl long is more like loop, very tight loops, and as the brush gets smaller, they start to look more and more like circles. All right? I'm not a huge fan of that either. My favorite is the dab, um, and I also like tight short. Tight medium and tight long are not bad, but dab is the most like a paintbrush. You can see it's just grabbing the colors underneath and really giving you a nice painterly effect. Now, as you make this, uh, this brush larger, obviously you get more of this kind of effect. Now, as the brush gets smaller, you get much more detail. So if we start going over like where we know the tiger's face to be, his, his face is somewhere right around here, we're getting a lot more detail, and it sort of is kind of beginning to resemble a tiger's face, but not really. Let's make the brush even smaller. Now you can see we're getting even more detail. We're starting to be able to make out, oh, there's his nose, there's his mouth, right? There's one eye, the other eye is somewhere around there. And if we want even more detail in the face, well, then just make the brush even smaller. And now you can see we're really getting great detail, the whiskers, everything like that. So with this tool, uh, it's a matter of playing around with brush size, uh, playing around with the style of stroke which you're painting with, right? It's whether it's the dab or loose, long, tight, medium, whatever. They all give you a different effect. Check them out and see. But also, don't forget to try different brushes. So you've got some of these 3D brushes. You've got different texturized brushes. And these are all going to give you a different effect. This is a much more texturized painterly effect that you're going to get with this much more texturized brush, which can be really, really cool. So we can, you know, add this to the face, really blend all of this stuff together here with our tiger. Um, tolerance, by the way, I like to keep it set to zero. It, it gives me the most freedom. If you increase tolerance, it's really just going to limit where the brush is painting. I mean, you got to try it to see what I'm talking about. It's kind of funky. I like to keep it down at uh, about 0% or kind of at 0% altogether. So you can see all kinds of different brushes, but also don't forget, um, not only can you use a hard edge brush, you can use a very soft edge brush and get some great, uh, get some great stylistic painterly effects with this as well. You can see paint over, oh no, the eyes are gone, but just make the brush smaller and hey, look at that, the eyes come 
right back. So it's a much different effect with a soft edge brush than you get with a hard edged brush, uh, but definitely something worth checking out and trying. So with this tool, it's really all about the brush you're using. It's a very experimental style tool. You're going to get different results every single stinking time you use it. It can be a fun tool to play around with. Again, practically speaking, um, probably not a tool you're going to use a ton, um, but a nice tool to know is up there in your toolbox. It gives you a lot of control. Think of it as like the oil paint filter. Um, but on steroids, so you just kind of handle all the details and how it all works out uh, yourself rather than being reliant on uh, Photoshop's oil paint algorithm to sort it out for you. So that's it for the art history brush tool in Photoshop. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.